The subject of today's video was the fastest wide receiver at his combine event, was the best draft prospect to come out of his small school in nearly 40 years, and was also supposed to be the next great weapon for the Arizona Cardinals. Unfortunately, Andy Isabella did not pan out. Through his first few years in the league, he has been labeled as one of the bigger busts from the 2019 NFL Draft, and in today's video, we're going to try to examine why. We're going to talk about his entire rise, go through his crazy story of how he got to this point, why he was so hyped up coming out of college, and what ultimately has happened to him. But before we get started, quickly be sure to leave a like if you're new to support today's video, subscribe if you're new and love college football content, and let me know what player I should cover in my next video. Now, let's get started and talk about what happened to Andy Isabella. Going back in time, Isabella grew up in a crowded house in Mayfield, Ohio, as there were nine kids, and he had two brothers and four sisters. He said there was never a quiet day. He liked baseball and ping pong, but one sport in particular he took an extreme liking to. He said, quote, Growing up, people would ask, what do you want to do when you're older? I'd say, I want to play in the NFL. When I was younger, I used to write plays in a playbook, and I think I was in first grade, and I would run those in the backyard. I'd throw the ball up, run up, and catch it. Some would tell him to make sure he had a backup plan, and some would be very openly skeptical. Others would just give him that look, and didn't be the one to tell him no. I mean, there was no reason. He was an undersized kid, who really honestly wasn't that great. The moment though he took off was seventh grade. He ended up winning the game ball for his performance, and he said, quote, I didn't start my first game in seventh grade. Midway through the first quarter, they put me in, and I scored a six yard touchdown on my first play, and ended up with four touchdowns and 250 yards. They all signed a game ball and gave it to me. He eventually would arrive at Mayfield High School, which is located 20 miles east of Cleveland. It didn't take the Mayfield coaches long to see that they had a very special player on their hands, and when the Isabella family ended up there a few years later, coach said that he was faster than pretty much everyone else. His speed was well known coming out of high school, as he was actually the 100 meter dash champion in Ohio. It wasn't all great though. Isabella's fast track to stardom hit a major roadblock as he broke his leg in the second week. That wiped out his entire sophomore year, and then as a junior, he was stuck behind another thousand yard rusher, making him move to receiver. Many thought he was too small at 5'9", and that he would never be an elite college football player. But he was still going to get an FBS chance, as two programs took notice, and were going to give him a shot because of his production and potential. If he ended up being 6'1", or 6'2", he would have had an offer to every school in America, as coaches said. He was still impressive, though. He ended up leading Mayfield to the state semifinals with 27 touchdowns and over 1,700 rushing yards. Andy was incredible, and it was that kind of speed that got Mark Whipple's attention in 2015. Isabel was finishing up his senior year of high school and was making waves as a great short distance runner. Whipple said, quote, We saw his 60 meter time was one of the fastest in the country, and we needed speed at UMass. At the end of the day, he just had two Division I offers to the Air Force Academy and UMass. Both are not the first names you think of when it comes to powerhouse football, let alone development of wide receiver talent. At first, he decided to commit to Air Force, but he didn't want to do anything after graduation, so he signed with UMass three days before signing day. They came in at the final hour, and after just one call from Coach Mark Whipple, he committed without ever visiting the school. When he finally did see it a couple weeks later, he actually thought he made the wrong choice. He said, quote, I was like, wow, the Air Force Academy is way nicer than this. It was definitely a cool campus, but my first impression was like maybe I messed up here. But obviously it worked out, and I've come to love UMass. He knew he'd have to work hard if he wanted to make it to the NFL, and because of his strong faith in God, he knew that UMass was the place for him. He said, quote, Nobody gave me a shot my entire life. Coach Mark Whipple did give me a shot. When Coach Whip called me and offered a scholarship, I said I'll take it, and it was a shot in the dark, and now I'm trying to take advantage of it. According to 24-7 Sports, Isabella was a zero-star recruit and was not listed in their 2015 recruiting database. So, how would this kid do in Amherst? Well, let's take a look. When Isabella arrived at UMass, the thought of him ever being an NFL draft pick was a complete fever dream. He was blocked on the depth chart by a couple of other running backs, and UMass was pretty much at the bottom of college football at the time. But he had a ton of speed, and because of this, it did not take long for the coaches to move him to wide receiver after seeing him dominate the position as a scout team player. After finishing his freshman year at the Minutemen, he just had two catches for seven yards. Isabella was honestly a little bit disappointed, and he was not happy with how his first year in Division I football went, so he joined the spring track team and thought that would be his rescue. Sadly, his track aspirations would quickly derail as he pulled a hamstring in his first meet. From then on, the coaching staff talked about how he took it to the next level. He started practicing like Tajay Sharp did a few years earlier, spent extra time running routes, 
got into peak physical condition, and just was ready to take off and try to get to the NFL. In 2016, he'd have his breakout campaign in which he caught 62 passes for 801 yards and seven touchdowns. He had over 100 yards in the touchdown against Wagner and finished the year with seven catches for 134 yards in the touchdown against Hawaii. Isabel was starting to figure it out and would put it all together even more in 2017. He'd end up catching 65 passes for 1,020 yards and 10 touchdowns. This included two back-to-back 100-yard performances against Coastal Carolina and Old Dominion, and then a huge performance against Mississippi State as he caught seven passes for 158 yards and a touchdown. He then followed that up with another 152 yards and three touchdowns against Maine, seven catches for nearly 100 yards against BYU, and then another big performance against Florida International. He is now playing against better competition and could become a big-time NFL draft prospect. That is exactly what would happen, as his 2018 season was truly historic. He went for 131 yards and two touchdowns in the season opener and then consistently averaged near 100 yards a game. But the back half of the season was his best work. He had nearly 200 yards and three touchdowns against Ohio, 191 yards and 13 catches against USF, 174 yards and 10 catches against Coastal Carolina, a touchdown against UConn, and then an absolutely absurd game against Liberty. In a three overtime thriller, Isabella caught nine passes for 303 yards and two touchdowns. You cannot make this up, and that feels like NCAA Football 14 right there. But that was not his best performance of the year. The following week, he'd have 10 catches against a good BYU team, and then he had the performance that made his draft stock skyrocket. Against number five, Georgia in Athens, he caught 15 passes for 219 yards and two touchdowns. This was the best team he had played in four years, and this was the best performance he had in four years. He scored two touchdowns against five-star defensive backs, and despite the entire defense knowing where the ball was going, he still managed to catch the ball 15 times. Isabella was truly insane, and putting on a show against a school like Georgia made him become one of those big-time names. His coach said, quote, He's humble, keeps his mouth shut, and when he steps on the field, he has fun and performs well. In 2018, Isabella led the country in receiving yards per game, was named an All-American, and was the highest-rated wide receiver in college football, according to Pro Football Focus. In roughly three years, Isabella had 231 receptions for 3,526 yards and 30 touchdowns. Because of this, he was now headed off to the 2019 NFL Draft, and he was slated to be the highest drafted UMass player in the FBS era. But the combine was almost a disaster for him. After he ran his 40-yard time, there was a glitch in the timing, except he didn't actually know that. At first, it was recorded as a 4.56, was mediocre compared to the hype he had, and that would have been devastating to his draft stock. In that moment though, he tried not to think about it, and went on to the next drills, and then caught all eight passes on all eight of his routes. He finished the catching session incredibly, and then he got the good news. He wasn't slow, and it was actually corrected from 4.56 to 4.31 for his 40 time. He was incredibly happy, and instead of a slow time, he had the fastest run by any receiver at the event. Isabella was now one of those huge names and was the biggest small school prospect in the 2019 NFL Draft. He ended up getting selected in the second round with a 62nd overall pick by the Arizona Cardinals. Except, sadly, things didn't really go according to plan. As a rookie, he only caught nine passes for 189 yards and one touchdown. His lone touchdown was a big highlight play, but other than that, Isabella was pretty disappointing. Many were expecting him to be better in 2020, but he didn't really improve. This time, he had 21 catches for 224 yards and two touchdowns, and now after two years, he had shown a little bit of flash, but was really going to need to figure it out in 2021. Sadly, things would only get worse. He appeared in eight games, catching only one pass. By this time, the Cardinals had pretty much already moved on, and in 2022, he'd play three games before he was done. He was eventually signed to the Baltimore Ravens practice squad, but never got a chance to get on the field for him. In his first four years in the league, he caught a total of 33 passes for three touchdowns and 447 yards. Currently, he's desperately trying to make it for the Buffalo Bills as he's on the cusp of making the 53-man roster right now. He's one of those guys that may get a chance just because of where he was drafted, but right now, Isabella has unfortunately looked like a bust. He arrived in the NFL with high-end speed. However, he has really struggled to get on the field or have much production. He's only started three of his 39 games, and he's not even guaranteed to make the Bills this fall. What's crazy is Cliff Kingsbury really wanted Isabella in his system, and when he was drafted, he was literally jumping for joy. While some will argue that he has just been misused or that he was treated terribly by the Cardinals organization, I still think it's safe to say that Isabella has not lived up to his hype coming out of college. I don't know the X's and O's of football, but based on what I've read, it seemed he was more of a deep threat, and with that not being as feasible in the NFL, and him being that much shorter, that probably didn't help him. He was also always consistently third or fourth on the depth chart, and never seemingly got that many targets to show what he could do. The good thing is though, he didn't drop the ball a whole lot, and was a great run blocker, 
and has a great work ethic. So hopefully he'll get a chance to save his career with the Bills and hopefully someday live up to that potential. Unfortunately, right now though, Andy Isabella has been a disappointment, but what do you guys think? What do you guys think of Andy Isabella? What player should I cover in my next video? And before you go, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe if you're new, and check out all of the videos on the end screen. Happy to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.